Hi, we're in Work Packet 3.2 and we'll be covering pages 1, 2, and 3 in this video. Topic 3.2 is about proving lines to be parallel. So in the previous section, um, we knew that they were parallel and we figured out some properties relating to angle pairs that we could, that we may be able to use knowing that they're parallel. Now we're going to work the other way around and we're going to say, um, I don't know that the lines are parallel. How can I prove it? So I'm going to, we're going to use the angle pairs that we previously um, determined to figure out whether two lines are parallel. So let's start up here. It says, how can I use angle pairs to determine whether two lines are parallel? Something new here is the transitive property of parallel lines. So if, if line P is parallel to Q and Q is parallel to R, well, then P is also parallel to R. So this is something new we're introducing in this topic. The conditional statement, we know that. It's something that can be written in an if-then format. It's either true or false. A hypothesis is what follows the if statement, and the conclusion is what follows the then statement. And why do we need to review that? Because in this packet, we're going to be using the converse, right? And the converse is formed by switching the hypothesis and the conclusion. So instead of saying if P, then Q, you say if Q, then P. Okay, so let's take a look down below here. So we're going to be using these angle pairs, and we're going to be using the conditional and the converse. So previously we used the conditional. What does the conditional look like? If we're looking at this diagram over here, we have two lines, L and M, okay? And if we're using the conditional statements for corresponding angles, that would state that if lines L and M are parallel, then angles 1 and 5 are congruent. So if line L and M, if they're parallel, then 1 and 5 are congruent. I know that because they're corresponding angles. Well, you see, I started with the assumption that the two lines were parallel. That's the conditional statement. I can work backwards, though. I can say, well, if I measure out those two angles, and they're of equal measure and therefore congruent, so if angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent, these two corresponding angles are congruent, then I can conclude that these lines are parallel. And that's what we're trying to do in this packet. We're working the other way around. We're working with the converse over here. In the previous pack we worked with a conditional, we said, if the lines are parallel, then I can show that these angle pairs are congruent or they're supplementary, right? The consecutive or same side interior and exterior angles are supplementary when the lines are parallel, right? Not congruent, but supplementary. And in this pack, we're going to focus on the converse. We're going to say, well, we don't know that they're parallel, but we're going to figure it out by the angle pairs and by measuring those angle pairs. So if angle 4 is congruent to angle 6, 4 and 6, well, they're alternate interior angles, I can conclude that these two lines must be parallel. Okay? So let's go to the first page over here. And so we're going to write that out, right? We're going to write out the converse of each of those statements that we showed um, that we proved to be true in the previous packet, right? So we have these lines over here, and the difference is that we don't know that they're parallel over here, and we're going to use the measure of the angles to determine that they're parallel. So the corresponding angles converse states that if corresponding angles, like 1 and 5 or 6 and 2, if they are congruent, then I can state that these lines are indeed parallel. So let's write that out. So I can say if angle 1 is congruent to angle 5, then L is parallel to M. So it looks like what we've previously done, but we're working the other way around. It's the converse. What about the alternate interior angles converse? Well, we know that alternate interior angles are 3 and 5 and 4 and 6, and if these were parallel, then they would be congruent. But they don't tell us that they're parallel. We have to prove that they're parallel. We have to work the other way around. Right? And the alternate interior angles theorem tells us, for instance, if angle 4 is congruent to angle 6, so they're alternate interior angles, if these are congruent, then I conclude that the lines are parallel. Remember, I'm always trying to figure out whether they're parallel or not. Alternate exterior angles, so that would be 7 and 1, 8 and 2. So if angle 2 is congruent to angle 8, then the lines will be parallel. And now we're going to move into the consecutive or same side uh, interior and ex angle, uh, exterior angle territory. And remember, they are not congruent statements, but supplementary statements. Okay, so the consecutive interior angles are supplementary if the lines are parallel. So the converse would state that if the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 6 
equals 180 degrees. So if you look up here, angle 3 and 6, they're in the same side of the transversal, and on the inside of the parallel lines, they're consecutive interior, same side interior. So if they add up to 180, right, and are therefore supplementary, then I can conclude that the lines are indeed parallel. Okay, and if I look at consecutive exterior angles, so 3, uh, I'm sorry, 7 and 2 and 8 and 1 over here, and I look and I see that they add up to 180, so the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 8 equals 180, then I can conclude that the lines are indeed parallel. Okay, so our mission is to determine whether those lines are parallel. We don't know it yet, we have to figure it out from the measure of these angle pairs. So if we go to 1 over here, it says determine whether these lines are parallel, L and M, based on the information given in the diagram. If they are, state the converse that proves that the lines are parallel. So if we look at these two lines, I want to know, are they parallel? Well, what I can do is I can use the alternate exterior angles converse theorem to figure that out. These are alternate interior angles, and if they're congruent, I know that these lines are parallel. Well, they are congruent. So I'd say yes by the alternate exterior, exterior, I'm going to abbreviate that, exterior angles converse, right, the converse theorem. That's what tells me that these two lines are indeed parallel. So let's go to question number four over here. Question four, again, I'm trying to figure out, are these lines parallel or not? Well, I see that these two are congruent. That's logical, right, because they're vertical angles. Okay, awesome. Can I conclude from that that line L and line M are indeed parallel to each other? Well, I can't because they don't form an angle pair. Remember, angle pairs are formed by an angle from this intersection over here and an angle from this intersection over here. I'm not given any of these angles. So I have nothing to compare that with. So I can't draw any conclusion. I can't draw the conclusion that those two lines are indeed parallel, even though they look parallel, but don't be deceived. So let's go to, I guess, this one over here. So again, I'm trying to figure out, are these two lines parallel? Well, these two angles are indicated to be identical, right? That's what these, this arc means over here, one arc for each. That means, oh, these angles are identical. Well, I also know that they're alternate interior angles. And I know that if alternate interior angles are congruent, then uh, the two lines are parallel. So in this case, I can state that the lines are parallel by the alternate interior angles converse theorem. Okay, let's go to the next page. So up top it says, given the following information, determine which lines, if any, are parallel. State the converse that justifies your answer. Okay, so we're given that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Angle 2 and angle 4. Angle 2 and angle 4. So if we're trying to figure out whether lines are parallel, right, these would need to correspond somehow, right? So we're going to be comparing this line with this line. We're trying to determine whether these two lines are parallel, not whether A and B are parallel here, because to determine whether A and B are parallel, I would need some angle, right, that some angle associated with A, of a transversal that cross over A and compare that to an angle for B, right? I would I would need one of these angles and compare them to one of these angles. But I'm comparing an angle from this intersection to, to an angle of this intersection, and that compares these two lines over here. So the only comparison I can make is between C and D, right? So which lines would be parallel in this case? Let's look at 2 and 4. Well, 2 and 4 are corresponding angles. They're in the same corner, the upper right-hand corner here. So if they're congruent, then I can conclude that C and D are indeed parallel. So I say that they're parallel because why? Corresponding angles. The corresponding angles. They're in the same corner of the intersection, the upper right-hand corner of the intersection. Okay. They tell us that angle, um, angle 5 and angle 10 are congruent. So let's look at that. So I've got angle 5 and angle 10 over here. So again, I'm comparing this intersection with this intersection. Well, this intersection cross over this line. This one cross over this line. And they have one transversal over here. So I'm comparing A and B and trying to determine whether A and B are indeed parallel. So angle 5 and 10, how do they relate to each other? Well, they're alternate interior angles with respect to these two lines. So I can say, yes, A and B are indeed parallel by alternate, alternate interior angles converse, right? They're all converse theorems. 
Okay, they tell me now that angle 1 and angle 13 add up to 180 degrees. Angle 1 and angle 13. And again, this is an intersection over here, an intersection over here. This intersection cross over these two lines. So I'm comparing these two lines. I'm trying to determine whether A and B are parallel, not C and D in this case, because I don't have any of these angles over here that, that, that cross over D, that are formed by transversal crossing over line D. So I can't determine anything about G. So clearly I'm comparing A to B over here. So angle 1 is over here, angle 3 is over here, and they are same side exterior angles. And if these two lines are parallel, then these two will add up to 180. Oh, they add up to 180, so I can conclude that those two lines are indeed parallel by consecutive exterior angles converse. Okay, let's look at angle 1 and angle 14. Angle 1 is over here, angle 14 over here. So again, I'm this intersection and that intersection. So I'm comparing these two lines over here. Angle 1 and angle 14, again, are alternate, are alternate exterior angles. They're on the opposite side, alternate exterior. If they are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. So I can conclude that the two lines are parallel because they are alternate exterior angles. Angle 14 and 15 add up to 180 degrees. So I have 14 here, I have 15 over here. So again, I have one from this intersection, one from this intersection. So I, I need to, I'm comparing C and D over here. This would be my transversal crossing over. And these are the two lines that I'm comparing to determine whether or not they are parallel. So if this one and this one add up to 180, then indeed they are parallel. So C is parallel to D because these are consecutive or same side interior angles. And if they add up, to 180 if they're supplementary, then the two lines they intersect will be indeed parallel. So this is consecutive interior angles. Okay, let's do one more over here, and then I want to go to the transit property on the bottom of the page. So angle 11 and angle 16. Let's look at that. Angle 11 and angle 16. Now right away what I see is that they're in the same intersection over here. And if I'm using angle pairs, I have to compare intersections, this one with this one, or this one with this one, but I can't stay in the same intersection. So this does nothing for me, right? I cannot prove that any two lines are parallel. Let's go to the bottom of the page over here. And this is the transitive property we introduced earlier. If two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. So if P is parallel to Q and Q is parallel to R, then P is parallel to R, okay? So if A is parallel to C, so A over here is parallel to, whoops, if A over here is parallel to C over here, okay, then it says state which are the lines of parallel and why. So A is parallel to C. Hmm, okay, so let's try, let's look at B and C, for instance, over here. Now I know if I'm comparing these two lines to determine whether they're parallel, I'm going to be comparing intersections on both lines. So let's compare this one to this one over here. Well, if I know that this is 96 degrees over here, I know that this guy is going to be 84. Because 96 and 84 add up to 180, and these two form a linear pair together. Okay. Well, if this one's 84 over here, and this one's 84 over here, well, these two are corresponding angles. And since they're identical, I know that lines B and C must be parallel. So I can see B and C. B is parallel to C because they are, uh, I can say, um, corresponding, uh, I can say a corresponding, these corresponding angles are the same, or let's just use these. These would be same side exterior angles. So same side exterior angles are supplementary, right? They add up to 180 degrees. And then I can conclude that A is parallel to B. A is parallel to B. Why? Because A is parallel to C and C is parallel to B. So by the transitive property, property of parallel lines, okay? So A is parallel to C, B is parallel to C, or C is parallel to B, therefore we have A is parallel to B. Thank you.